Hey guys, so I really hope you enjoyed my cover of Writing on the Walls by Under Oath. I had a blast learning this song and performing this cover. Aaron Gillespie is one of my favorite drummers to ever walk the earth, so it was super, super cool to finally cover an Under Oath track. The reason why I chose to do this song now, too, is because my patrons wanted to see it. If you are one of my patrons at the gold tier and up, you do get to vote and influence on the content that I'm putting out in the future, as well as things like merch design, stuff like that. While I'm on the topic of my patrons as well, I'm going to take a quick second to say a huge thank you to Alex, Taylor, Thomas, Ryan, Christian, John, Sarah, Drew, Daniel, Julius, Tony, Paul, Zach, Blake, Cody, Chelsea, Scott, Al, Vincent, Kyle, and Aubrey. This is just a handful of the names of the incredible people who support me on Patreon to help make videos like the one you are about to watch possible. So thank you to all of them. And I want to leave an extended shout out to Alex. In the description below, you can find a link to Alex's Twitch stream. Alex is one of my executive producer patrons, which is the highest tier you can pledge to the channel, the highest tier you can donate. So if you are a fan of games like Rainbow Six Siege, League of Legends, uh, go and check out his Twitch stream. It's in the description as I mentioned. A really simple way for you to support this channel if you are a fan of video games and you spend some time on Twitch is simply just clicking through his channel link and uh, and maybe leaving him a follow, checking out his stream. I do spend a lot of time on his stream because he is one of my patrons. So me and the other guys on Discord, we hang out, we play games a lot together. So you'll, you'll probably hear my voice on his stream quite a bit. Now, with all that being said, let's get into learning this song. The tempo of writing on the walls is 184 beats per minute. There's no tempo changes. I'm going to be first passing each section at that tempo and then dropping it to 115 to better help you figure out what's going on. The time signature is 4-4 and there is no time signature changes. We're just in that time and that tempo throughout the entire track. Now, because this song is very non-linear, like the, there's no section that repeats itself. And in the sections, the, I don't think really there's even many fills or phrases that repeat themselves at all. It's it's a very, like it's, a, it's like a journey. You're sort of, every section it's changing and there's always like constantly a new part coming up that you're gonna have to learn and because of that it was very difficult labeling the set well it, it wasn't very difficult it was easy to label them because I simply just assign them numbers usually I go like intro verse pre-chorus chorus and, and sort of try and keep like the the structure of the song in mind and break it up into those pieces for you guys to better help you learn the structure and to keep you organized in learning the track as you progress through the video but for this one uh, because of how non-linear it is I just rolled with one through ten and I tried to make all the sections the uh, the same length and phrase they're not all the same length, but they're all about the same length. And I try to break them up with what makes sense. So with all that being said, let's get into uh, section one, the very first section that we're going to come to here in this lesson video. So when I talk about phrases, usually that means in this tempo, it for sure means that one phrase is going to equal four bars. So four plus four plus four plus four is going to equal 16 here. So we have 16 bars in this first section and throughout most of the sections, it's going to be about 16 bars. Each four is going to be its own phrase. So in this section, the first phrase or first four bars will be the same as the third four, but the second and the fourth are going to be different patterns, but then we're going to sort of flip flop back and forth. So we're going to start with this like to pat and then like it's got its own sort of feel to it. The first phrase and then the second phrase and um, and fourth, like I said, they're going to be sort of flip flop mirrors of one another. Here's section one performed for you right now. Coming off of section one, we're going to go into section two. In section two, this part, I think this section is my favorite through the entire song, either this section or section five, but we'll come to that. We'll come to that here in a sec. But this section is awesome. There is no repetition here. The concept of what you're doing on the hi-hat with the snare drum is uh, it, 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 it travels throughout the section and you see that as like a, as a theme of the of the phrasing. But uh, but there's no there's no real repetition, um, no exact repetition, at least. So, yeah, it's all just it all just comes down to memorize uh, memorization for for a song like this. Let's get into it. Section two performed for you now.
Coming off of section two, we're gonna go into section three. Now, sections one, two, and three for the performances that I've been performing for you, these guys, these four sections are all the same length, which is 16 bars here at 184 beats per minute. This next section, section three, is a similar grouping to section one in the sense that we're gonna have phrase one and phrase three the same as each other, and phrase two and phrase four will be the same. Now, when I say the same, they're not exactly the same. There is no repetition that's exactly the same in this song, but they're similar concepts, very, very, uh, very, very close. In, uh, in their sort of similarities. And with that being said, let's dive into this guy. So section three performed for you now. Coming off of section three, of course, section four is next. Section four is gonna be the first section in which we're doing half as much. So I've been performing 16 bars, now we're just gonna do eight bars for this guy. These eight bars are really like a, it's like a transition sort of section, I guess. It's gonna take us, uh, the first half of it, technically there's no drums because they're kind of like, it's like sample, like 808 samples that are very like bit crushed and sort of, I guess, hi-fied. But I did play over it and in, I mean, this is a song too that's been covered so many times. And in most of the other covers, like in Luke Holland's cover and a lot of the other ones, that I've watched just over the years of this song. Uh, usually drummers will play the part here. It's super simple. It's just that ba, 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 ba. That, that, um, that's, it's like iconic to this song. I, every drummer knows it. So here's that section, this transition here in section four, performed for you now. So the next section we're gonna come to is section five, this section. Throughout the section, almost the first time we're gonna see like real repetition, I guess. The first and second phrases sort of repeat one another, kind of, and then the last two phrases are gonna be a little bit different. This section is a breakdown for sure with, uh, with some really cool fill placement. A ton of transitioning over the bar line throughout this entire track, which makes the song feel so organic. It makes it feel just like, like you're traveling and everything that you come to is very unexpected. It's just, it's so well written. I love this song. I I love the drums for this song. I love everything that, you know, everything that Aaron uh, is on and under oath. So I don't know, this song is just so sweet and I nerd out about it all the time. Uh, staying in focus, staying on track. This next section, breakdown, section five, here we go now.
So next is uh, section six. And earlier I said that section five was my favorite. I messed up, I meant section six. Section five is sweet, but section six is my favorite throughout this entire song for sure. This is also gonna be the toughest part for you at home learning this guy. I'm not playing exactly what's going on on the track for the four phrases we're gonna check out. The other thing too to note here is that these, this section, um, it's all fills. It's just fill after fill after fill. And, uh, and that's what makes it so difficult, I guess. I think too, what I'm gonna do is either for the entire song or for just this section, I'm gonna do an episode of What the Fill where we really dive in and do like each one of these fills. There's four fills in section six that we're about to take on. Um, if you have a really tough time here, like I'm kind of saying to, uh, alluding to here, I'm probably gonna go through this section and break them down at even slower tempos, take you through the transcription, what it looks like, the sticking, everything like that. Maybe we'll do a deep dive on this section in an episode of What the Fill. If you would like to see that, make sure to let me know in the comment section. Uh, and if I get enough of you guys uh, sort of interested in that, then I will definitely Definitely try and add that to an episode of What the Fill. So here we go with the hardest section, the most difficult section in the song, at least in my opinion. Section six, perform for you now. So the next section we're gonna come to here is section seven. Uh, in seven, it's gonna be another shorter one. Uh, it's gonna be only two phrases instead of four, so eight bars. Really, this section could have been part of six for sure. I mean, it almost feels like a little abrupt where I cut it, so I apologize if it makes it more difficult for you, but the reason why I cut it where I cut it, at least between six and seven, the reason why I broke those up into how I have them broken up for this video is because I just felt like section six was so much to learn that I didn't wanna overwhelm you. Like, I wanted you to be able to stop and take a break break and then take on seven as the sort of last two phrases in what could have been part of six. I hope that all makes sense. Um, that's just why I grouped it how I did. And yeah, this is just kind of like the final finisher for what has been a series of fills and very sort of ups, uh, I guess, peaks and valleys in the feel of the song from section six with all the fills around the kit and everything. So, uh, so yeah, with all that said, here's section seven performed for you now. So after section seven, after seven, of course comes eight. Section eight is gonna be, really section eight's another one of these examples where eight and nine really could have been grouped together. And I hope it's not too abrupt the where I cut it. But again, as I uh, mentioned before we went into seven, same sort of thing here. I just broke it up because I felt that like after the duration of this next section, after eight, it was just enough, you know, and, and, and learn nine on its own kind of thing. Uh, the whole thing with eight and nine though, is just gonna be like this outro before the huge, really long bridge or a huge really long dropout that really is just like the, the final sort of conclusion on the song. So eight's gonna be all halftime. Uh, there's some really cool fills. There's one really cool fill in eight and then there, we see that fill again in nine but a variation on each other kind of thing. Let's get, uh, let's get into it here. Section eight performed for you now.
Next, we come to section nine. Section nine, as I just said, uh, is gonna be like the second half of eight. There's really not a whole, we're just kind of continuing eight, and then there's one new fill to learn at the very beginning of where I started this section. Um, really, for sections eight and nine, the only thing you need to pay attention to, I guess, outside of the fills, is just when my right hand goes from half time to full time on the uh, on the on the crash ride or on the crash. So uh, so just pay attention to that, and that's about it. So here's section nine. We're almost done the song. So here's section nine performed for you now. All right, here we are. The final section to learn, section 10, the conclusion of the song. We have this huge dropout after nine where we're just kind of chilling for a while. And then we hit, hit, we hit section 10 here as a breakdown, outro, conclusion. It's very short, it's very simple, not a whole lot going on. There's one quick little fill in the center line of the section. And then there's the, the kind of cool little uh, or whatever that takes it out of the song at the end there. And that's it. So here is uh, the final section, a very quick and easy learn, which is awesome. And you've got the song. So here's section 10 now. So there you have it. Congratulations on learning Writing on the Walls by Under Oath. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson video. I hope it helped you get through the song. And if you did, please make sure to let me know by leaving a like. If you're new here, I encourage you maybe hit the subscribe button. If you want to support the channel and help fund videos like these going forward, then you can check out my Patreon link and my merch link in the description below. You can also check out Tequila Mockingbird's Twitch page in the description below as well underneath my executive producer title and, uh, and maybe leave him a follow. Outside of all that, of course, as always, you can connect with me further on my social media pages. There's links on the screen for you right now as well as in the description below. Thank you so much for checking out this video once again and I will see you guys very soon with something new.